we are developing deeper relationships. Uh, this summer, our focus at Christ Church Albany is we want to learn to better love each other and to be loved by each other as Jesus loves us. And one of the tools that we are using to learn how to better love each other uh, is these video teachings. And so there's going to be five different video teachings this summer. And the goal is that you watch these whenever uh, you're available to watch or to listen. But then we really want you to take time to get together with a small group of people, three, five, ten, and spend time discussing and talking and questioning, and most importantly saying, how can I actually apply this? How can I actually take next steps to better be loved and to better give love? Uh, because we don't want to just learn about what it looks like to love. We want to actually take next steps to love. And so I hope that this is helpful. Uh, so as we start, I want to talk about yearbooks. Uh, I don't know if this is still a thing in school or not. Uh, and when I was a kid, at the end of the school year, we would always get yearbooks. And then the last couple days of school, you would take your yearbook around to all your friends and acquaintances, and you would have them sign your yearbook. And one of the common things that people would write in your yearbook is they would sign their name, and they would write these words. Keep in touch. Because as kids, I guess we like intuitively knew that we'd just been spending all this time together in school. You know, every day we'd been in class together and eating lunch and recess and our friendship had really been born out of all of that time being spent together. But now, as we we're launching into summer and new schedules, we were going to have to be way more intentional. If this relationship was going to keep going, we we're going to have to intentionally keep in touch. Because I think what we all know intuitively about relationships is that relationships have a tendency to lose steam over time. That it's easy at the beginning stages to spend a lot of time together with a group of people, but then over time it becomes less regular. And this happens all the time. Uh, I can remember in the height of COVID, uh, it seemed like everyone was setting up these Zoom calls. And so, you know, I had a Zoom call with my family and Zoom call with, you know, my old college friends and everyone was setting these schedules like, okay, every Thursday we're all going to get together on Zoom and we're going to have this conversation together. Or uh, sometimes it was neighbors and, you know, every, every Sunday night we're all going to take lawn chairs. We're all going to sit in our driveway and sit, you know, six feet, 12 feet apart. And let's start this new thing. And every Sunday we're all going to get together and have new neighbor conversation uh, or in life in general you know you set up like okay we're gonna have like girls night once a month or you know we're gonna get this group of friends together on a regular basis uh, or one of the things that uh, I do a lot as I do uh, premarital counseling for couples getting ready to get married and one of the pieces of advice that I often give them is make sure that as you start your married relationship set up some sort of a routine, rhythm, regular date night. Uh, and couples always kind of like, hey, that seems crazy because when you're, well, when you're dating, when you're engaged, it's like I mean, date nights all the time. You know, we're, we're always going out to dinner. We're always going on long walks together. You know, we're always spending natural time with each other. But I say is what every couple who's been married 20 years or more like me knows is that life just has a way of getting busy and pretty soon you're just not spending as much time together as what you used to because the natural drift of relationships is just to kind of spend less and less time with people over time. Uh, and this is something that even as we've been kind of introducing this series uh, over the month of June, uh, something we've talked about quite a bit is I've heard from a lot of folks that we've talked about, do you have deep relationships in your life? Uh, one of the common answers is, well, I, I did have some people that I was really close to, and at some level, I still feel like that I have a close relationship with them, but it's been a long time since we were in a regular habit of spending time together. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons of why relationships have a way of just kind of like drifting apart where you're not spending as much time together. Uh, sometimes it's because of busyness, just life gets in the way and there's just so much going on. It just doesn't feel like we have like time to get together. 
Uh, sometimes it's just the messiness and awkwardness of relationships. Uh, it, you get to know people a little bit and it's like, it turns out like they're a little annoying and it turns out we're a little annoying and it turns out that you know, at a certain level, like you start to like notice some things about them that maybe they try to hide from a lot of people, but now like you've known them long enough that it, you notice and maybe more importantly, they start to notice those things about you that maybe you try to hide and it's like, are we really ready to go like that deep and that open and that and that vulnerable? Uh, sometimes it's just the complexities of life. There's all kinds of different reasons of why relationships just tend to like drift, uh, especially in how much time we spent together. And this is not uh, an unusual thing. Uh, so I want to read you a, a one another. This is. Uh, this summer, we are learning how to better love one another as Jesus loves us. And so Jesus gives this big commandment that I want you to love one another. And then in the rest of the New Testament, there's 59 different other times where they use that phrase of loving one another. And they try to like spell it out. I mean, what does it mean? What does it all does it look like to love one another? Uh, and here's one of them from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. and says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging all the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, and we don't know exactly what was going on uh, the writer of Hebrews was writing to, but apparently 2,000 years ago there was a trend that Christian groups, church groups, small groups were in a habit of regularly getting together. And then as some time went on, they just stopped. They just kind of gave up meeting together. And I think this is incredibly important for us. Uh, we've been really focusing this idea that we want to, to really take next steps in loving each other this summer. And part of how we want to do that is we want to schedule time together. Uh, and so hopefully uh, if you've been kind of with us uh, for the end of the spring and end of the summer, uh, you've heard us talk about that we're going to do these large group activities over the course of the summer. And we've asked you to look at your calendar. And if you can possibly be at those, we want you to kind of put those on your calendar and make sure you're there. And then we want you to find a small group of people that you can prioritize, that you can be flexible, pull out this, the calendar and figure out, you know, when we can you know, possibly figure out when we can all be together. Together and find five times that we can intentionally be together so that we can discuss these videos and so that we can learn together how to love each other. And hopefully a lot of you have taken that step. You've pulled out your calendars and you've put those things on there. But here's what is going to happen. We're going to go through July and August and September and you know whatever the schedule you guys figured out for when you're going to meet. And life is going to happen. You know, you're going to look at your calendar like, okay, tomorrow is when we're supposed to meet with the group, but like, I'm, I'm a little tired and I got these work projects going on and I got this thing I was working on in the yard. I'm not quite done yet. And you know, the kids are whiny and I'm whiny and uh, I, it's going to be nice out tomorrow. I mean, maybe we should go do something. It's going to be rainy tomorrow. Wouldn't it be nice to stay inside? There's going to be so many different things that are going to pop up of reasons of why at some level, it would be easier just to stay at home, be easier just to like watch Netflix, be easier just to like scroll through Facebook and like, you know, yeah, I saw some stuff that people were doing. I hit some likes on a couple people. Like, let's call that good. Let's call that relationship building. And it will be easy to not always meet with your group or to even give up meeting with your group. Uh, and again, this isn't like an unusual thing. Uh, relationship psychologists talk about this trend a lot. Uh, they call it stages of relationships. Uh, and they'll say that first relationships start with kind of a honeymoon period. There's kind of this like, oh, like I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, get to know this new person. We have this new friendship, you know, I'm a part of this new church. Uh, I'm a part of, and everything. I'm just so excited. I'm so optimistic because this is going to be great. But then pretty quickly you move into a time of, conflict uh, or chaos or complexity. Uh, different people call it different things. But it's, okay, we, 
this has been great, but now it's starting to get a little bit difficult because I'm busy and you're busy and you're know, figuring out schedules and uh, we've started to get to know each other a little bit and again, you know, I, there's annoyances are coming out and I'm starting to, it, it, people are, we're at this point where I feel like if we're really gonna like keep going, like I'm gonna have to start sharing some stuff and, and you're gonna, and I don't know if we, we really wanna share all that and it just, pretty quickly relationships just can get complex and, and hard and so then you have a choice of whether you're going to move to that next stage of just working through it. Of are we going to do the hard work of actually working through the busyness, figuring out the schedule? Are we going to figure out how we're going to, even though we don't agree on everything, even though there's some annoyances, even though there's some complexity in the relationship, are we going to take the time to actually figure this out? And then the last stage is health. It's once you kind of get through the honeymoon, you get through the complexity, you go through some hard work, and then is when you get to actual deep relationships. And what we want to encourage you this summer, one of the keys, I think, for us building deep relationships is committing to be a part of a group and then to keep being a part of it, keep showing up, to keep working through when it gets difficult. Uh, I love this quote uh, by a guy named Joseph uh, Hellerman. Uh, Joseph uh, wrote a book called When the Church Was a Family, Recapturing Jesus' Vision for Authentic Christian Community, which is what we want to do. We, Jesus had this amazing vision of what church family can be, and that's what we want to be. Uh, and here's what he says. He says, long-term interpersonal relationships are the crucible of genuine progress in the Christian life. People who stay also grow. People who leave do not grow. Uh, let me read that again. It says long term, sticking with it, not giving up. Interpersonal relationships are the crucible of genuine progress in the Christian life. People who stay also grow. People who leave do not grow. Uh, and I think we all get this. This is really the way of like, any kind of like a good healthy discipline or habit is it takes a long time for us to really see the full fruit of it. Uh, uh, John Mark Comer talks about uh, the idea of spiritual disciplines and habits and he talks about that a lot of times in the short term you really don't see much progress. Uh, so if you start if you exercise one day, you probably don't see you know a big return on that. You don't see a lot of fruit. You start flossing your teeth one day. You know you eat really well one day. You really don't see a big progress. On the other hand, if you backslide, if you have one day you know where you you didn't exercise that day, one day where you forgot to floss, one day where you know you just ate terrible food, you don't really notice a difference. Where you really notice the big difference is over the long haul. It's when you do this day after day after day, week after week after week. And where we really see relationships start to grow and thrive is when you give it just the time to really grow. Uh, last week, uh, Ash and I were uh, doing dinner with some friends uh, of our families. We're hanging out, kids, uh, and both of us had been married about 20 years. Ash and I will be uh, married 20 years this December. That the couple have been married about 20 years, and somehow our kids started asking us about the different stages uh, of our relationship and marriage. Uh, and we started talking about when were like the hardest seasons of our marriage. Uh, and of course, after being married 20 years, uh, both. Ash and I and the other couple, we had some stories. Uh, there's some, some seasons of our marriage that have been really, really difficult. Uh, times where we moved beyond the honeymoon period and now we, there was conflict, there was annoyances, there was like, okay, we, we're not, date nights don't just happen anymore. We have to be like intentional of if we're going to make this happen. Are we going to have the difficult conversations or not? And both Ash and I and the other couple, both of us got through those hard times. We did the hard work and now we're at a stage of healthy uh, marriage to the best of our ability. But both of the couples, we said that the health of our relationships now wasn't in spite of those hard times, 
but it was because we went through those difficult times and it was the, the conversations, it was the work, it was the, what it took to be able to figure out how we're going to keep this relationship going when in some ways it would be easier just to drift apart. That it was the work of making the relationship work, that that's what actually produced the healthy relationship. And I think that this is what we will find is that's when we decide we're going to keep showing up. We're gonna, I'm a little bit tired. There's a lot of reasons of why maybe I couldn't go and that person's not my favorite person to spend time with, but I'm going to go and I'm going to keep leaning in. I'm gonna keep sharing. I'm gonna keep trying to be open and vulnerable and I want to keep working with this relationship because that's where we really see the growth. Uh, another uh, way to think about this, uh, another one another, uh, this comes from Romans 12, chapter 10. It says, I want you to be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Uh, and I like that idea of being devoted to one another, committed to one another in brotherly love. Uh, and I think that's probably like the best analogy for what we're trying to do this summer. Uh, and it's might have even been a little confusing because we've often uh, talked about the idea of what we want to do this summer is we want to build deeper relationships. And we've used the phrase, we want to build deeper friendships. Uh, and I'm all, I, I'm all for it. Friendship is a great thing. But here's what's true about friendships is friends, you, you get to pick your friends. Uh, as kids, we used to say, you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose, which is really good advice. Uh, it's true. Uh, you, you, get, you choose your friends based off of you know, your affinity and what you like, and there's probably a, a little bit of a bigger honeymoon period because you, you like these people. You've chosen them, and there's still conflict and things that happen in, in, in friendship relationships. But really, the better analogy metaphor of what we're trying to do is we are talking about building deep relationships with church family. And family is a different thing than friendship because you don't choose your family. You don't choose who's your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle. And sometimes you have a brother, sister, aunt, uncle, mom, dad, that to be honest, you, th there's natural conflict there. Uh, you don't always agree with each other. Uh, they might not be the people that you would naturally choose to be together. Uh, and this is in our church family, maybe even in your small group of people, there might be some people that they might not be the, the people you're normally friends with. These are not the people you would normally choose to spend lots of time with. But now here you are, you've committed, and you are in a church family relationship with them. And what we hope is we want you to have kind of a brotherly, sisterly devotion. Uh, this idea of, you know, in a good, healthy family that's like, okay, Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays, family reunions. Uh, there's a family across the street from us, and every Sunday night they do a big family dinner where they all get together. And there's this devotion. And, and they, I'm sure there's times where they don't all agree. There's times where they might be on different ends of the political uh, spectrum. They might disagree with how they're parenting their kids. Uh, they might disagree on them. They might annoy each other to different levels. But it's like, okay, but we're family. And so we're going to get together, we're gonna to spend time together, and I'm going to intentionally build a relationship with you because you're, you're my family, you're my brother, you're my sister, you're my mom, you're my dad. And those are the kind of relationships we want to build. Uh, I do want to clarify, because that might come off, uh, and understandably so, as like a little bit like, cultish, uh, a little bit toxic of like, okay, we want you to like, you know, sign this piece of paper and now I want you, to, now you're a part of this for the rest of your life, whether you want to or not. And that's, that's not what we're saying. Uh, maybe some of you have even experienced that before where you were in a toxic relationship and you just felt this pressure that you needed to be loyal, even though it was really, really harmful to you. Uh, or maybe you've even been in like a church culture that was very, very toxic. Or maybe it was just, it was just drudgery. I mean, you just, you know, someone drug you there or you drug yourself there. But you just, you hated it. It was boring. You didn't agree with anything that they were talking about. But you just felt like, ah, I, I gotta be loyal. Uh, that's not necessarily what we're saying. There, there are times where a relationship can get so harmful, toxic, that maybe the best thing is to leave. But there's also many times where there's, we, we leave way too early 
And it was, it was a minor thing, really. Uh, it was something that could have been resolved. It could have been talked out. And it was really, we left just because it was the easier, more convenient thing to do. Uh, and what we want to talk about is we want to have the kind of family relationships that as I sit here, uh, this is our dining room table. And so this is where we often have family dinners whenever we're able to uh, get uh, Ashley and our two kids together. And I feel like I'm regularly having these conversations with my kids of like, I need you to come to the table and I want you to eat with our family. And I, and I know you would rather play and I know that you're annoyed at your sister right now and I know that your brother is, uh, there's problems. I, I know that there's a lot of reasons of why we don't want to get together right now. But I want us all to get together. I want us to eat together. I want us to talk together. I want us to pray together because because. You're, you're siblings, we're a family. I want us to build something together. And what I believe is that if we just keep showing up at this table, if we keep eating, if we keep having conversation, then we will work through some of those difficult things. And what I hope is, even if my kids are fighting, I hope that they are developing a devotion and love to each other and that these habits of regularly getting together and having to work through and other one another's we'll talk about this summer, being patient with each other and listening to each other and helping each other and all the things that we're trying to teach our family, that as they do that, that a relationship, a long-term interpersonal relationship grows over time and that years from now that they look that they have this really deep sibling relationship that was built over all kinds of time of meeting together and even working through difficult things. And that's what I hope for your group, uh, for our church family, that we can make a commitment to each other, that we want to keep meeting together even when it's a, such an easy, natural drift to, to stop meeting together, to, to let our, our busyness of wives, let the complexity and annoyances of a relationship, it's so easy to just like drift back into pseudo relationships and into loneliness. But if we want to be the kind of people who pursue deep, healthy relationships, we want to keep showing up, keep moving. Uh, so here's what I'd love for you to do uh, in your groups of three, five, eight when you get together. Uh, is I would like you to spend some time discussing these questions. Uh, the first thing that I want you to do, and this is what we're going to do every single time we get together with our groups, is I want you to talk about what you are currently learning from Jesus. Uh, so this summer, we are working on loving each other as Jesus loves us. And so for us to love one another as Jesus loves us, we have to know how did Jesus love? How did Jesus talk about love? How did Jesus demonstrate love? Uh, so we have this uh, reading plan. Uh, you can uh, find it online, uh, download it, or we have physical copies if you come to uh, the large group gatherings. Hopefully many of you already have one. But there is a daily reading plan where you can read about something that Jesus de did or something that Jesus said. And in every single one, there is a lesson of how Jesus loved that we can apply to our lives. And so I want you to take time every single day to learn from the master of loving relationships. Uh, maybe take a journal and write down some of your thoughts. And then when you get together with your group, share what have you been learning? How did Jesus love each uh, other people? What was Jesus' radical, countercultural way in which he loved other people? That he loved people that agreed with him, that he loved people that disagreed with him, that he loved difficult people, that he made a routine. Of, what does it look like for Jesus? What are you learning from that? And how can you apply that to your life? Uh, so spend some time talking about that. Uh, and then let's talk about this idea of meeting regularly together and not giving up when it gets tough or when it gets inconvenient because it surely will. Uh, so first, uh, maybe share some stories in your life. Uh, what are some relationships in your life that have drifted apart? I think we all have them. Some folks that at one point we had a regular routine of getting together and then somewhere along the lines, it just kind of drifted apart. And it's been a while since we called them. It's been a while since we've been together. And why is that? Uh, was it because of busyness? 
Uh, was it because of the complexity and annoyances of relationship? Uh, was there something else that caused that kind of that drift in relationship? Uh, and then maybe some of you have a story on the other side. Maybe you have a relationship that you really have kept going over the years or maybe even over the decades. And it's been difficult. You've gone through, I mean, you, you had a honeymoon period, but there's been some, some hard times, some conflict. There's been a lot of times where it would have been easier just to kind of let that relationship drift. But you have gone through the hard work. Uh, share those stories with each other. What did that hard work look like? Uh, and then what would it look like for this relationship that you are in with this group of people? Maybe this is a new group that you're a part of. Maybe some of you have known each other for a while. But what would it look like for you guys to avoid those tendencies that have made some of your relationships in the past drift apart? Uh, name it. Uh, is busyness the number one thing for you? Uh, is it... The, the vulnerability stuff of it just once people start sharing too much to you or once you feel like you have to start, does, it just, does that just get awkward for you or there's parts of you, is that what makes you drift away from relationships? Uh, is it just that you just have never really been a part of a good, healthy relationship? So you just, you don't even have like a picture of what it looks like. What is it that has caused you to drift from relationships in the past? Uh, or maybe what has made you stay in relationships? And how can this group of people, that you are building deep relationships, how can this look differently? Uh, and then I would love for you to talk about the idea of devotion. What does it look like to be devoted to someone in brotherly love? Uh, and maybe talk about you know, what is maybe some of the potential unhealthy parts of that. You know, are there, you know, what are the times where a relationship gets so manipulative, toxic, you know, whatever it might be, that there are times where you need to leave? But what does it look like to be like devoted to a relationship, even if like there's times where it's difficult, it's hard, I, I don't even really like this person right now, but I'm devoted to them. Well, what does that look like in a healthy sense? Uh, and I think this might be an interesting conversation. What do you, discuss in your group, what do you think Jesus is actually calling us to when he says he wants us to, or you know, when the writer of Hebrews says, I want you to not stop meeting together as so many are in the habit of doing. That I want you to be devoted to each other. What, what does that look like in real life? Because uh, I mean, maybe some of you are already thinking about some of the past relationships in your life. Like, are, are you saying, John, that like we need to like go back and find our old yearbooks? And, you know, see who wrote "Keep in Touch." I need to like rekindle a relationship with them. You know, like, are we supposed to like develop friendships? And now we have to be friends with these people and you know keep doing dinner with them every single week for the rest of our lives? Like, I don't know if I have like the time or bandwidth for that many relationships or to keep that many relationships going. Like, how many relationships do we need to be devoted to? And for how long do these relationships need to exist? Uh, and I don't really have an easy answer for that, but I think it might be a really interesting discussion in your relation in your uh, in your group to talk about of what does it look like to keep meeting together, to be devoted, uh, and like Joseph uh, Hellerman said, for us to have those long-term interpersonal relationships. What does that mean? Uh, what does a long-term relationship look like? How, how many of those relationships can we have? What's realistic? And what does that look like for us as a church family? What does that look like in our small groups? What does that look like in our large groups? Uh, because I think this is the tension that Jesus is asking us to live out. That we are not meant to be alone. We are not meant to just run away when relationships get tough. Uh, it's so easy in our world to give excuses and to just not make time to meet with other people. And so what does it look like for us to be a group of people that are taking steps towards deep relationships, towards meeting together on a regular basis, to being devoted to one another in brotherly love, what does it look like for us, for you, to love each other as Jesus loves us? Uh, so discuss all that, talk about how you're going to apply that with your life, uh, and then we'll see you uh, in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.